want it to be considered as a top of the table club. Go to the pictures and a full house at White Hart for the 132nd North London Derby. It started off well for Tottenham. Christian Ziga with the free kick. Ziga Ziga Oi Oi. I always want to say that. Beating David Seaman with the curling left footer. What a goal this was. This was in the 11th minute. Seaman saw it coming and he was trapped. 1 0 for Tottenham. Tottenham had a chance to increase their lead. Arsenal in trouble. Robbie Keane has stopped. Defender Ashley Cole is on the line. Amazing. Still 1-0. Just before the midway break, the ball put onto the path of Thierry Henry. He chases it a long way. Then keeper Casey Keller with the foul. He's booked. From the spot, Robert Pires. 1-1 after 45. Second half, Tottenham, Robbie Keane behind the Gunners' defense, and he's stopped by Seaman. Cole and Seaman save the day for Arsenal as this ends up level at one. I think everyone uh, that sees that game will, will say that we deserve to win it. We did enough to win it. Um, I'm very proud of the way we played. I think that's probably the best we've played, uh, certainly this season. I thought we had a, a good balance between uh, creative football and a real passion to win the game. And I'm uh, happy because we really didn't give in and uh, we had the first uh, 30 shaky minutes and then we came uh, back to 1-1. In the second half, the game could have gone both ways, I feel. Sir Alex Ferguson's United team from Manchester versus Glenn Roder's West Ham side. United have won six in a row. The Hammers' last Prem team not to lose to United, but it's not good early. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer on the cross from Gary Neville. And Gunnar gets the goal, although it looks like it took a deflection off a West Ham player. That goal beating David James 1-0 after 15. Two minutes later, United with the free kick. David Beckham, the specialist, but he's on the bench. Juan Sebastian Verón. He scores to make it 2-0 on the 17th minute, curling away from James. That's his second goal in the Premiership. Nice goal it was as well. Curling away always. And David Beckham quite impressed with that effort. West Ham with a chance. United in trouble. Solskjaer's attempt to clear hits Scott Minto. Jermaine Defoe would turn and strike. But the play was called offside. That just seems to be the way the luck is going for West Ham. I don't know. What do you think? Was he offside or not? Offside. Offside. Offside, thinks Jamie. I don't know about that one. Second half, and this didn't help. The ball into the area. It's off Sebastian Schemmel. Manchester have now won seven straight. 3-0 was the scoreline in this one. Well, Verona's goal was fantastic. The marvelous hit. We just got the break in the third goal. I think it was an own goal, wasn't it? Uh, so th that's the kind of break we weren't getting a few weeks ago. It's the kind of break that West Ham are needing. Uh, losing two goals within a minute does not help the cause at all. Uh, the second goal was a fantastic um, free kick from Veron. Uh, the wall was a perfect wall. We had no complaints with the wall. Uh, the wall did its job, really. But top corner was just too much for David James, who incidentally, when he had to uh, do well today, he did, uh, did very well. Chelsea versus Middlesbrough, Riverside. Emmanuel Petit gets to the ball, but Mario Stanek takes the dive. Yellow for Petit. Free kick for Burrow. Jeremy the strike. He scores here. One nil. Beating Carlo Cudicini. And Burrow had the lead after 32 minutes. Whether it should have been awarded today at the Riverside will be put into sharper relief. Chelsea then off the corner. Jimmy Floyd, the service. John Terry back. ties the match. Put it. Terry has the ball roll By right John to Terry. his feet. He'll beat well, Mark Schwarzer. It's 1-1 one, one after 42. 1-1 one, one the final. Uh, goals change games, and uh, that was important. You know, the next goal after 1-1, one, one, um, I felt that was going to be the winner. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get it this week. Uh, hopefully, we'll get it in the future. We create a two, three good chances to score, and they score it first. Unbelievable, but that's the football. And the second half, uh, I think, uh, uh, in my opinion, that the match was uh, more tactically. And, uh, but uh, uh, both the team wanted to win. In every action, uh, the players showed the, the, the real consistency, the real uh, uh, 
of um, Will. Everton versus Blackburn. Free kick for the Rovers. Andy Cole with the header in the sixth minute. And it's 1-0. Richard Wright in goal for Everton. That's his third and 150th in the Prem. Everton get back to level terms. Lee Carsley redirects the cross. And it's 1-1 after 25. Brad Friedel in goal. Then 13 minutes later, 17-year-old Wayne Rooney with a goal to the far side. His third. But watch how this play began. It's keeper Wright with the service to Rooney. He eliminates the middleman. Everton win their first and four. The final on this one, 2-1. Newcastle and Southampton went at it head-to-head uh, -head at St. Mary's. The most interesting storyline from this match was a personal battle between strikers James Beattie and Alan Shearer. Despite Beattie's 11 goals in his eight games leading up to Saturday's match, Shearer is not convinced that Beattie is ready to be called into action by England's national side. We'll take a look at this game. Interesting match early on. It's Brent Omerod with a chance, but Omerod misses the far post with that boot right there. Newcastle free kick. Alan Shearer redirects it with the inside of his thigh, but what a save from Paul Jones to keep things scoreless. They test Jones again. This time, Gary Speed tries to head it over top of the goalkeeper, but he bats it away with another fine effort. At the other end, Omerod sees Beattie break it in. His cross is tipped, but Shea Given makes a huge save to keep it scoreless, as we said. Second half, still no goals. Craig Bellamy given some time, and he will make them pay. Curls one in from 20, on 20 yards out, and it's 1-0 for Newcastle. 52nd minute, Fabrice Fernandez with the cross that Newcastle can't clear. In comes Chris Marsden. 1-1 the final in a very well-played match between these two teams. It, it was fantastic. It really was. As a manager, you really shouldn't be enjoying games. Uh, but I thought it was brilliant. I really thought it was a great game. And the atmosphere come to the end of the game. There's players at each side slapping each other back on great game, smashing. Every one of them really enjoyed the game of football today. And I think I've never seen that before. Sunderland versus Liverpool, 35th minute. Liverpool's defense breaks down. That allows Gavin McCann to walk in and flick the ball over the keeper. It's 1-0 for Sunderland. Second half, Liverpool responds. Somehow, Milan Barros is left wide open in the area, and he makes no mistake tying things up at a goal apiece. We head to the 85th minute. Sunderland hadn't scored in four games coming into this match. They have one now. Michael Proctor misses the first time, but he does not miss the second time. 2-1 the final score. Sunderland goes on to win this one. West Brom at Villa Park. Aston Villa with the free kick that somehow finds its way through the wall. Darius Vassell fires the home side in front. It's 1-0 Aston Villa. At the half hour, Lee Hughes is blocked. Jason Kumis is there to follow up. And he gives West Brom a hope at possibly one point tying things up at a goal apiece. Injury time. Thomas Hitzelsberger will bring the fans out of their seats with this effort. 2-1 the final score. Aston Villa goes on to win. Thomas had the shot right, almost with the last kick of the game that got a deflection. But I think if there's one team that deserves a little bit of good fortune this season, it, it's us, it's uh, the Villa boys. Uh, we've gone down to the ten men, uh, and we battled. And at the end, you know, West Brom have had one shot on target, which is the goal that they scored from. So I think we very much deserve to win the game. Uh, after a scrappy first half between Charlton and Manchester City, Jason Ewell fires home from the spot. And it's 1-0 for Charlton. Follow the bouncing ball in his next play for a moment before it sets up nicely for Klaus Jensen. Cool side-footed finish for him. It's 2-0 for Charlton. Then it's Man City's Ali Bernabia with the cross. It tips to Mark Vivian Foe. He taps it home, makes it 2-1. And off a of Manchester City free kick, Foe strikes again. This time three minutes from the end of the match. City walk away with a hard-earned point, 2-2 the final. One other score to tell you about from this weekend. Corral, not to mention, help Venable's cause on the touchline, wouldn't you think? To the highlights, and there is Bolton manager Sam Allardyce. His club coming off a draw with Blackburn. Leads off to a flying start. 12th minute, Danny Mills will start it and finish it. Plays a nice one, too, with Kuehl before rattling in an unstoppable shot beyond the keeper, Yaskalainen. Mills scoring his first this season, and with the left foot. Not a goal scorer, that's for sure, but he brings a smile to his manager's face. And four minutes later, the manager would still be smiling. Ian Hart for that. Oh, oh complete confusion. And what a soft goal. Bolton claiming offside, but they're not going to get away with it. He's never scored an easier goal in his career, Robbie Fowler. What a total mess by Bolton Wanderers. A comical goal.
goal that you wouldn't see on the local park on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Dreadful defending indeed leads with the 2-0 win. Bolton, or lead rather, Bolton a chance to get back into things. Ian Hart called for that arm on the ball. Hart argues with referee Graham Pohl, but the penalty will indeed stand. Yuri Yorkaev from the spot. Paul Robinson guesses right and turns the shot onto the post. Second half, Bolton almost pulls one back in the 64th. Yorkayev with a great effort. Block shot the ball to Stig Tofting and his volley just over by inches. Robinson getting his fingertips on it. Leeds would add a third in the 74th, and it's another stunner. Former Blackburn winger Jason Wilcox. What a drive. Venable celebrates as it's three points for his side, and the pressure, perhaps for now, will subside on the manager. The manager's fault, lots of players' fault. We're all behind the manager. He's a, he's a, he's a great manager, and we all like, appreciate what he's doing. But it, it is the players' fault at the end of the Coming. This was already their 34th match of the season. Birmingham gave a first premiership start to Californian striker Jovan Kirovsky, once a former Manchester United trainee who Steve Bruce had signed at Crystal Palace. Kirovsky had already been used six times as a substitute in the league, but now he really had a chance to shine. Taken him a few months to settle at Birmingham, but the 26-year-old was relishing his moment in the spotlight. A tremendous first goal for the club. The match between these two last month ended nil-nil, but only after Fulham had two players sent off. This one was also littered with yellow cards. Carl Morte was clattered by Darren Purse, but it's difficult to know who came off worse. The upshot was a yellow card for the Birmingham centre-back. Fulham were missing all four recognised strikers through injury, with Steve Marley the latest casualty. Purse ensured the stand-ins would have a hard time in front of goal, doing what he's good at to block Silva Legwinski. John Tigg and his men had won their last two league games at home against Liverpool and Leeds, but Birmingham had the chance to put this game out of reach. Stinton Morrison denied by the outstretched legs of the lanky fin de Sarre. With 20 minutes to go, Fulham played it up to substitute Callum Willock. First didn't waste any time waiting for the card. A second yellow, and therefore red from referee Andy Dursa. Quite an introduction to the Premiership this season for the young Fulham striker. On for the injured in a motor. Deep into stoppage time, Fulham's best chance of the match. Miss cued by Legwinski as Birmingham held on. The two teams swap places with the Midland. Liverpool, Darius Vizel from the spot, however, the equalizer.